uh, with my, got it. Uh, although with my, my co-chair, Anthony Brown, so something is lacking here, but uh, I'll do my best. Uh, so today I just wanted to focus very briefly on a kind of snapshot or overview of what we did in the curricular enhancements um, subcommittee, uh, focusing particularly on the recommendation that we uh, revise the pluralism and diversity requirement, because that is the thing that is very much alive in a, in a campus conversation. So um, let me share screen here. Um, okay. Can you see this in full screen, Julie? No, it's not full screen yet. Okay. All right, all right, almost. Okay, yeah, we see the small tiles on the side, but that's that's fine. Okay. Here we go. Now it's perfect. Yes. Live. Okay. Um, so I will make this slide available through assert or these slides available through assert after as well, because um, there was a lot of work that went into the subcommittee. So I just briefly want to put this slide up. You can get a snapshot of that and then um, you can look at the names and have conversations with these folks later. So um, we started our work with very broad conversation, um, but we were tasked within about a year, year and a half to come up with what were called actionable recommendations. So that's obviously something you can only go so far and then um, the work has to go to Senate committees and curricular committees, as well as other forms of lifeblood in the, um, in the campus like assert. And so I'm excited that this is happening. And the very first of our recommendations that became actionable was to have uh, faculty fellows in in racial equity in the curriculum. And so it's exciting to, to hear about those projects today. So the first overarching questions that emerged in our discussions were how to balance the need to address racial justice in the curriculum uh, as it is happening in specialized disciplines, like at our in our context, AFPRL um, and sociology in many different places, um, social work, while also recognizing race and ethnic studies as specific fields, uh, specific fields of study versus across the disciplines. Um, and also how to think of the, about the structure of our curriculum. I can't see my own slides fully, oops. Um, so that students don't think about things like the pluralism and diversity requirement as uh, singular one-off courses, but they, they figure out how, and we figure out how to articulate that work across their majors and across their coursework. So it's not a one and done situation. So we determined that a scaffolded approach was necessary uh, and we organized into four interrelated but distinct areas. Um, the most relevant for us here, I think, is are the first two, general education and racial justice across the curriculum. And we also had a specific subcommittee working on graduate education, uh, which is a little bit of a tougher, tougher nut to crack because it is a little bit more siloed. You don't have the same equivalent of um, general education. Um, so how do we uh, think about it in the graduate context? And how do we incentivize faculty and students to think through this work and do this work other than those who are already self-selecting? Probably a lot of people on this call fall into that self-selecting category. Uh, so we had uh, these general education requirements, broadly speaking. Um, most urgently, we felt there was a need to expand and reconfigure the four existing pluralism and diversity categories uh, and provide students with a robust list of courses to fulfill each area. One of our findings in the research phase was that students often take the same five or six courses to fulfill their pluralism and diversity, although we have a large roster of courses that fulfill the current categories. So how do we think about not just what these courses are and how they um, fit the criteria, the four existing categories, but also how do we think about how students access these courses? Um, we urgently felt that we need to revise the categories, work that is now um, in, process. And Lisa Anderson, I see you're on the call. And Lisa and uh, Laz Lima from AF, Lisa from German and Laz Lima from AFPRL are leading a subcommittee um, of the GER Senate committee about this P&D revision. And I'll say a little bit more about that after. And we recommended that we need to have conversations like this happening at a CERT, uh, town hall meetings, what should these new categories or a revision of the pluralism and diversity look like? 
Um, and the first of those town halls is going to be happening next Thursday, I'm sorry, next Wednesday, the 26th, during the regularly scheduled Senate meeting, so 3.50 to 5.20. And because it's not a regular Senate meeting, there will be both an in-person in the regular Senate room, which I think is Hunter West 714, and uh, in a Zoom link. So a lot of different ways to participate. And we're hoping to get a very broad group uh, of people coming to that, not just senators, not just people who are engaged with the CERT. But so um, I encourage you to share that information with your students and start having these conversations in your classrooms uh, to enrich that conversation on Wednesday. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip over what our current pluralism and diversity requirements are, uh, with the exception of saying that they were established in 1993. Um, so we are obviously in a different moment. And we felt that a revision should be organized by these three sort of principles or um, these three mandates <laughs> that we need to be thinking about structural inequity. We need to be thinking about social justice, and we need to be thinking about inclusive epistemologies. Uh, and by epistemologies there, we mean um, theories of knowledge, how we come to know what we know, and how knowledge is organized, even within disciplines. So the committee offered a tentative reframing of these categories. Um, let me move your faces so I can see them directly. Race, citizenship, and human rights in the US globalization, culture, migration, and diasporas, gender, sexuality, and intersectionality, epistemologies, power, knowledge production, environment, technology, and social justice. Just a couple things to note about that. You'll note that there are five categories rather than four that we currently have. Uh, the committee was not suggesting or recommending that we have five requirements total, but we might think creatively about whether we want students to choose four among five or how could that work. We wanted to kind of think big and really think in terms of what do we want this to do. And I also really want to emphasize that these are absolutely starting points where, that were generated from the work and the conversations of the subcommittee and our oh. subcommittee more generally. Um, but these are meant to be provocations maybe and also um, starting points for a conversation. So these are certainly not the final categories and there is a lot of room to adjust them. We've already been having really productive conversations about what's missing, um, what might also be in here, even whether we want to retain the language of pluralism and diversity. And the other thing I would say is that you might notice, though, that there is a very loose sort of mapping of the current categories fit or could be translated into this. So the committee was not into these new tentative categories. So the committee was not recommending that we throw out every cat, every course that fulfills uh, the current pluralism and diversity, but rather we think critically about what we want these categories to be and how to redescribe or redescribe or update the courses that are currently fulfilling this and have an opportunity for other courses and departments to contribute to pluralism and diversity where they maybe haven't as much as uh, humanities and social sciences. So they would be more there would be more STEM courses as well. Um, finally, this would uh, involve a recertification process of the courses that currently satisfy pluralism and diversity. And we expect that these updated categories will allow departments and programs themselves to review their coursework, see what they're already doing that is maybe not represented or reflected in the categories as currently constituted. So we're just seeing this as, uh, or the committee was seeing this as catching up with the work that is happening across the college um, that is not reflected in the 1993 categories. So finally, as I started, um, the, the very first recommendation that has become actionable is we recommended that assert have faculty fellows that discuss racial equity in the curriculum because the pluralism and diversity recommendation, that's all trained through Senate committees, of course. Uh, but we wanted to have conversations that were bigger than that also, that were about how syllabi are constituted, how conversations take place in the classroom, the language that people use. And assert seemed like a very natural kind of partner for this. 